I am 32 years old, actually, this week. Actually, by the time this video comes out, it's my birthday tomorrow. Yay! Which means you have to be extra nice to me because in 32 years, I have never heard about paper stumps. I copped a bit of flack for this actually in my recent video on TikTok art hacks. Everyone's commenting about how many comments there are about me not knowing what a blending stump is. So you're telling me that a guy who's been drunk for more than 10 years doesn't know what a blending stump is. We're gonna need a video dedicated to blending stumps. I'm surprised you didn't know what a blending stump is. I was genuinely shocked. I've known about them since first grade art class. First grade? You're like seven years old. I was rather shocked when he didn't know what a blending stump was. It blew my mind that Jazza didn't know what a blending stump was. I Leave you don't know what a blending stump Who is. Who else was surprised if you know what a blending stump is? I'm shook that the great Jazza, my art idol, didn't know what a blending stump was. How in the world do you not know what a blending stump he is? He is an amazing artist. Oh, stop. And to not know about blending stumps literally shocks That's me. It's like a race car driver not knowing what an engine is. Is it though? You can't drive without an engine. You can draw without a blending stump. In fact, in this video, I'm gonna share my secret. Maybe, maybe you're the dumb one. Oh, I don't know what a blending stump is and Jazza doesn't know something I know. I can't believe I am shocked Jazza doesn't know what a blending stump is. Well, smarty. Pants. Maybe I'm the real winner here because my secret is stumpy fingers. So in this video, <laughs> I am pitting my fingers against the almighty blending stump and I'm using blending stumps for the first time and sharing that experience with you. This will be either a revelation for me or you or both of us, who knows. Blending stump time, well, no, stumpy finger blending time. So we're gonna start off really simple. We're gonna start off with a sphere, I'll lightly indicate the borders, the edges of our sphere. And I'm gonna do a couple of areas of shading. Obviously, I want the sphere to look three-dimensional, so I'm just gonna start lightly shading in from the outside edges, bottom and right side up and to the left. And the first trick is actually knowing how to blend with the pencil. So to get a really smooth gradient, what I'm doing is using a nice soft lead, being fairly gentle with how I put it down, but also building up and you'll notice changing direction a lot. I'm going sort of perpendicular to the direction of the lighting and then I go back and just make sure to go over the same areas, but in a slightly different angle so that I'm not strengthening the uh, intensity of the lines that show the direction that I've been drawing in. Now, to be honest, I think this actually looks pretty good. Like I wouldn't think it needs a lot of blending because sometimes a little bit of texture sort of works in the favor of an illustration, but where gonna be blending today. So that's my foundation. And the other thing I want to put down is a little bit of shadow. So I'm gonna be really light here and just sort of mist underneath the ball. All right, so now to the finger blend technique. So I mainly did this in high school. I haven't done a lot of graphite drawing as an adult, but I would literally hold my finger with my middle finger and my thumb so I can press down and blend with a firm tip. <laughs> I hold my little finger stump. I just softly blend in here there we go, look at that, just little circles. And as you can see, I'm creating a nice smooth blend. Now the trick with this is actually being pretty subtle because you can sort of smear it and not undo it. But if you sort of start from the outside and work in towards the shadow, reason being obviously you get graphite in your finger. If I went back to the highlights now, I'd bring shadow into the highlights, which I don't want. So you start in the highlights, you work your way out. If you want to apply more pressure, you hold your finger like it's a tool. I can do the same thing here in these outer shadows on the surface that the ball is resting on. I don't know, it feels natural to me. There's something tactile about the sensation of the nerves on my finger going, oh yes, this drawing is doing well and I can feel it. But you can't feel that with a blending stump. There you go. Not bad, huh? Pretty good, huh? Impressed? I know. Uh, and then you just lick your finger clean. I'm just kidding. Actually, what I always did is I opened to the back of my sketchbook and used the old wipe clean. You just wipe it off like that and then uh, slowly use up two or three pages in the back of your sketchbook to put the graphite back on. <laughs> Look at that. Clean hand, beautifully blended balls. I'm doing all this first because I'm leaving room for the blending stump to blow my mind, but I thought it would be fun to give some context as to how I've gotten by and what I have done instead when I've wanted to achieve 
I'm thinking a similar effect. Maybe it's way better, maybe it's way worse. We will find out soon. But in the meantime, let's draw a refined character portrait. So I've just done a bit of a portrait of a lady where I sort of thought I could approach the shading to be fairly rough and semi-textured, but not so much that it won't allow me to smooth it all out with my blending technique. All right, so I have the lightest areas obviously being the, the cheek here, the front of the nose, everything else starts to sort of fall into shadow. So starting off in those lighter areas, I don't wanna to touch the white, then I'm just gonna to start to blend out and then press quite firmly as I reach the more shadowed areas. Now, as you can see, this actually adds intensity to the shading. It makes it look darker, sort of overall, because it's spreading uh, the graphite that I've put down. Now, even here, where I had really rough and really dark graphite under the hair, by being quite firm, it actually ends up looking pretty soft. You can still see a little bit of that original texture, but it's soft enough that the smoothness is much stronger than the texture. So I think it's actually the oils and then the friction of the skin that grabs and spreads and sort of smooths and blends uh, the the graphite. And I think honestly, the result of this, which I, you know, just using my finger, has only taken me, you know, a minute tops and completely blended and transformed my illustration and actually give me a little bit of power to add a bit more darkness in some areas if I control it that way. And in fact, because I have graphite on my finger, I can actually use this to, why not, you know, add a little bit of misty shading to the hair, which I haven't shaded at all. That actually looks pretty bloody good. <laughs> so there you go, I've shared my illustrious finger blending technique. Now it's time to see if it's very dumb in comparison to these or blending sticks, is that what they're called again? Blending stumps are uh, what they're all cracked up to be. So I got them in a variety of sizes. And how do you, when you've used it, how do you, I'm assuming they're like a pencil, but you don't, I mean, I don't have a pencil sharp and a hole big enough for the big one. Does it work with the little one? I don't know, did that work? All right, let, let's start from the start. So same as last time, during a sphere, reasonably textured, but as smooth as I can, blending with a pencil first, then we're gonna see how a blending stump makes a difference to this as opposed to my finger. And before I put the blending stump down, I just wanna share a term that I have found useful to know. And this situation in particular conjures it to mind. That term is cognitive dissonance. Let's say you've lived your whole life thinking A, B, C. But then someone else comes along and says, hey, no, you're wrong, it's one, two, three. So our little person in our example here can do one of three things. They can disregard one, two, three. Uh, no, you're wrong, A, B, C is right. The second thing is they can add one, two, three to the mix and decide, hey, maybe there's a point to one, two, three, but I like A, B, C. So maybe A, B, C is as easy as one, two, three. Baby, you and me, girl. Or three, they can completely reject their original worldview, A, B, C, in favor of the newly learned view, one, two, three. I may well be about to face a cognitive dissonance. I have all my life blended with my finger stump, but I'm about to blend with a blending stump. I mean, it's, it's papery, like rubbing paper against paper. I guess that's the idea. Now, as I do that, it's picking up the graphite and you know, obviously if I draw with that, that's gonna spread the graphite. So I have to, I guess, turn it as I go. I'm using the angle now, but it's picking up a lot of that graphite. So if I want a clean bit, I go to the clean bit of the blending stump. And as I spread out, just like I did with my- Oh no! No, I did an accidental smear. No, it's okay, I can blend it away. It's okay, don't worry, relax. Calm down. All right, I'm gonna angle down now, apply a bit more pressure. Oof, this is, uh, it does, this has a more immediate impact. I will give it that. But actually it's less smooth. It's not blending to perfection. Now, obviously I have no technique, so I have no idea how to use it. And maybe I'm using it wrong. And maybe these things need to be worn in. Like maybe uh, you use it for a while and it, it gets softer and you get better blends. This is pretty cool. As I work with it, first of all, there's a couple of things I'm noticing. One, I'm taking more time with it, uh, which I think produces more results. I think I had a ceiling on how much I could do with my finger, obviously, no surprises there. Whereas here I can keep working at it 
uh, to get a softer and softer blend. And I have a bit of control in the sense that obviously my finger is a very broad area and I go over edges, whereas here I can keep quite a sharp point, go right up to the edge without smearing over it. They're pretty cool. <laughs> and clean up the edge here, there we go. Look at that nice sharp edge. I have uh, infinite amount more control uh, and I can look at areas that, okay, I think this isn't as soft, so I can just go in this area and just keep working it until it, it matches what I want the rest to be like. Maybe even go back with the pencil, add a bit more shading here, and then duck back to the blending stump and soften that in. I mean, to be honest, there's actually a, a different kind of texture that seems to be emerging from using the blending stuff. It almost makes this sphere look slightly dimpled. Anyways, let's go to this outer shadow area. Now, obviously I've got a darker shadow, but then I'm, I wanna go back out to the lighter shadow. My blending stump is very heavily colored now. So I guess I'm just gonna flip to the lighter side, which I haven't yet used. How do you clear a blending stump? I, I feel like there are some areas where I have a lot more control and somewhere I feel like I have a bit less. Like here, I wanted to just softly gradiate out there and it just got a bit harder and sort of push the shadow further out than I wanted to. I could erase it back, but then again, that's sort of like a harsher transition. And that actually is where my finger is gonna get a softer transition. So this makes me think my conclusion may be that the answer is why not both? There is a speed to using your finger and there is a softness and a broadness to the, to the blending that actually is a lot easier than the blending stuff. But, Okay, yeah, like, I mean, in fact, let's go back to our uh, finger blended sphere. Yeah, okay, you can actually see flipping between them. The original pencil texture is there a lot more in my finger blend. It still looks quite soft, but I have the ability to further and further blend until it's almost completely gone. Detail guide, how to use a blending stump. Smudging, drag the stub to smut. Yeah, I figured that one out. Shading, draw some tight scribble, okay. I mean, the, the drawing bits is pretty straightforward. And it turns it from this to this. I mean, it's subtle. How, oh, this is what I need to know. How to clean a blending stump. When the tip of your blending stump becomes too dull or dirty, you can sharpen it using a sandpaper sharpener. Am I an idiot for not knowing what this is either? Sandpaper sharpener. So sandpaper. I don't have a sandpaper sharpener, but I got sandpaper. All right, sandpaper, blending stump. I don't know if it needs to be a certain grit of sandpaper, but I mean, that did a pretty good job. Hey, alternatives to stumps and tortillons. Makeup or paintbrush, Q-tip or... Using your finger to blend a portrait is a no... Wait, is a big no-no? Because the natural oils from your skin can cling to the graphite, making the area impossible to erase. This cognitive dissonance thing is painful. <laughs> All right, final test. I'm gonna make an artwork using nothing, a pencil, and blending stumps. I wanted to go for intensity. I wanted to push my ability to use blending stumps in my very little understanding of them to their limits, but also push the physical blending stumps, blending capabilities to their limits as well. With my sketch coming together, I actually really like how the original illustration looked. So I feel like we should just take a little screenshot here and we'll come back and compare to what it looks like after the blending stump has been applied. All right, blending stump time. Now, this is all very experimental. I have had very little practice with this, obviously. I mean, my sum total of blending stump experience you've seen in this video, but I just got stuck into it, felt my way through it, and I have to say, it's really cool, guys. Okay, it's really good. I really like how you can blend so well, and it's accurate, and it, with, with light and dark areas, it just blends really nicely, and uh, it's, it's good, okay? They're really good. I don't know why I haven't known about these for 32 years. So here's my finally blended illustration. Now, I, I don't like these sunbeams I put in there, but because I used a blending stump, there's no oils that put it down like it would have if it was my finger, meaning I can erase it. In this situation, I might just come in here with my eraser, and just lightly add in just a, a little bit more highlight in some areas. And then if I've taken it too far back, I could just go with my blending stump and soften it again. It's pretty cool how there's a lot more push and pull uh, using these things. So at the end of the day, what we were talking about with our cognitive dissonance, the reason it's a term, the reason it's dissonant is because it's not the truth or the transition particularly that matters. It's how you feel 
Cognitive dissonance is a term about facing something that's uncomfortable, like the fact that you've been doing it wrong your whole life. When it comes to how it's blended and how much it can be blended, obviously, the blending stumps win. I don't think the finger blending method is entirely ruled out. I think there is a place for it. And to be honest, these things take up space and make mess. And there are situations where both of those things are problems. So I think my response to the cognitive dissonance is neither the complete accepting or rejecting of either, but the knowledge that both can work in harmony. It's my birthday as well, so I don't want to be completely wrong. This was a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed coming on this journey with me. I hope that my finger blending techniques help some of you and also that some of you learn about blending stumps through me, with me for the first time. Let me know if there's anything else I'm missing here, guys. Any like art supplies or methods that would be dumb to not know. Right, now everyone's gonna be like, have you heard of a pencil before? Yes, I've heard of a pencil. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you think I haven't tried that isn't obvious. I mean, maybe these were obvious. I don't know, guys. What I do know is we will continue to explore the obscure or obvious art techniques together. We'll teach each other things and sometimes they'll be obvious and dumb and sometimes they'll surprise us all. Thank you for joining me for this video. Tell me how I did using it for the first time and uh, make sure to subscribe for more fun with art and creativity because that's what we do here. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. There are more videos over there you're bound to enjoy if you like this one. But otherwise, that's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.